Serious, doctors and therapists of Reddit, have you ever been glad that a patient stopped coming to you? What happened? Orthopedic surgeon here. Best, worst, patient shows up for elective surgery munching on a big cup of ice. Big nope. Tell her we have to reschedule her case. She throws a tantrum. But I have dry mouth and have to chew this ice. I understand, but we can't put you under with a belly full of water. Risk of throwing up and sucking all that stomach goo into your lungs and dying. And go back and forth like this for a few minutes. I say to her you know, talking to you is like talking to a toddler. She didn't like that at all. Finally tell her to go home and I'll leave the pre-op area. A few minutes later the nurse finds me and says Ms. Pain in the butt won't leave. She says she doesn't have a ride home. I give the nurse $20 to call her a cab. To this day still the best use of a 20 ever. Never heard from her again. I had a patient that I saw quite often for a number of simple illnesses. She would often joke that she came in just because I was working the clinic that day, said she would check if my vehicle was outside. Over the course of several months I noticed she was coming in more often and with less clothing on. Short skirts, low cut tops, last straw was her coming in with a loose fitting shirt and no bra. I fired her as a patient after that. That's actually smart, you can lose your license if you fool around with a patient. Yes, but almost exclusively patients that are seeking controlled substances that I don't believe are indicated for their condition. I've never fired a patient, but I've definitely have patients that don't appreciate my attempts to wean them off their chronic opioids. Many patients with chronic pain are happy to try my suggestions. However for those that aren't interested in reducing their dependence on these medications, I don't think I'm a great fit as their doctor. In my homeland. I used to run an outpatient clinic together with several other GPs. The patients can freely choose which doctor they want to visit, or if they're regular patients, to change doctor if they want. Somehow, I was always stuck with annoying patients, like those who were over demanding, tried to steer the doctors on what to examine and what to prescribe, impossibly uncooperative or non-compliant, hard-headed and in complete denial, like to argue back, all you can name it. Most of them are also doctor shoppers and like to boast about that. A clear red flag. Usually, most doctors would try to be sugarly sweet and nice and suck up to these patients no matter what. But I just couldn't. I treated them like any other patients. Yes means yes and no means no. We can discuss the medications and course of examinations but you can't steer me around like a car and have it all your way as you please. Most of these difficult patients were often displeased and somewhat crossed by my policy, yet they keep returning to me, despite me giving very clear sign I'm never going to treat they specially or give in to their demand. Eventually, after several consultation, a lot of them would never return, which was completely expected from their doctor shopping behavior. I always feel a lot relieved while wondering why they didn't go away sooner. Even my colleagues and nurses often joked whenever a new difficult patient came saying my calling had come. I used to practice in a clinical situation where most of my patients were older or elderly. It didn't happen often, but the patients that I would always dread seeing were the ones who were starting to lose cognitive skills and memory abilities, but had absolutely nobody else I was legally authorized to speak about their care with. Spouse was deceased, no kids or kids were estranged, etc. Appointments could often turn into he said she said, so it would take me forever to write reports for those patients because I essentially had to include every word said by either of us into the report to document that I told them something. For when they inevitably returned later on complaining that I never told them that exact thing. I'd never wish anyone harm, but I did occasionally find myself searching local obituaries when I'd realize I hadn't seen certain patients like that in a while, in the hopes that maybe I wouldn't have to. Pro tip, the mean ones never die. My great grandma went this way a while back once the family dumped her in a home. She passed this week, but spite fueled her for 108 solid years. Totally mundane anecdote, had a person who insisted on regular contact, no cost to them they received general support from our service but wanted a regular appointment with psychologist, didn't really have a purpose other than a general chat, basically just encouraged spacing out appointments and then at some point they just decided they couldn't be bothered walking in, it's kind of surprising how draining it is to have a benign but knowingly unuseful appointment on the regular. A couple of years after becoming an attending surgeon, 
I had this miserably pessimistic patient with mostly problems related to self-neglect. She was agoraphobic, barely left her house, and a glutton for misery, basically refusing to do anything that might better her circumstance. She came to see me because she had a gastric bypass somewhere else in the past and wanted continuity of care. One day she hands me an envelope and tells me I've been served and that she's sorry her husband the process server couldn't ever catch me at home because I work too much. It's true. I was working quite a lot because my wife of 12 years was being insufferable since we had moved away from her best friend in Miami for an incredibly better quality of life and work situation. Anyways, there were divorce papers and my wife was leaving. Me to marry her friend's brother which I was already anticipating. It worked out well because then I was free to start over fresh with someone who shared my current priorities. Now we have 3 kids and a great life of rewarding work for only half days frequent travel and leisure, and three awesome young children. The miserable patient didn't feel comfortable having me as her provider after that even though I offered to continue to do so. Huge win on all counts. Sure, sometimes it's just not a good fit and that's a relief. The one I recall the most relief around worked hard to blame me for her lack of attendance and no showing. Going as far as to scream at me on the phone and accuse me of lying after I had been crystal clear regarding my boundaries and attendance expectations. She was not ready for therapy in the way I was able to provide it. She came back to the clinic later and saw someone else and did a lot better. I felt for her, but I'm not putting up with that. Honestly, it's way more often that I think fondly of the amazing people I've been honored to work with, wonder how they are doing, and wish them well in my mind. My job is truly a gift. Tons of times, the whole department was glad when a certain rude PT's insurance changed. They recently switched back because of course they did. We're awesome. But the nurse who dealt the most with them cried and said she couldn't do that again. Nothing that stands out to read it. Standard threat in everyone's jobs and safety everything they come and be demanding to an absurd degree and take 1 plus hours of our time for a 20 minute apt slot and threaten to call the director if we didn't bend over backwards. But points like that one are frankly common. You just don't quite see them every few weeks for benign chronic conditions that can be managed with a yearly follow up. Another person was disgusted that we wouldn't see them for free after they realized they had to pay a copay to see us and acted like it was our problem to fix. Doctor stuck by her guns and the lady failed filing a complaint with the medical board for us telling her to pay her part. Neither a doctor or therapist, but I am a manager at Laser Hair Removal Clinic which also does chemical peels. We had this one client who we will call Dumbi, DB, so she would come to use for treatment for laser and go to one of our therapists. Now typically our clients will always see the same therapist for consistency, but this time we couldn't. After the treatment, she complimented our therapist and then when our therapist left, DB said to our receptionist that she was terrible and wants to see someone else. Okay cool so we booked her in with the next therapist and during her treatment, she just starts bitching about her previous one. Comes out and compliments our therapist, then asks to see a different one like what? She then starts bitching to the next therapist about the previous two. She did the same pattern through all five of our therapists and then goes back to her original and be about the other therapists and says you're the only one I like. The others are just horrible and you're the nice one. Now she said some very racist and harsh remarks during her bitching. So I had to talk to her about it and tell her that we cannot treat her anymore. She called us all C and then had a nerve to call us up for a refund which was declined. Friend of my parents who is a therapist told me this story when I asked her about how she coped with her patient's suffering. She told me that there was one patient she had and wished she would never have met, through no fault of his own. Though, she wouldn't give me much detail of course, but this is the gist of the story. She had a patient who came to counseling after decades of trying to cope with his childhood on his own and failing. It took quite some time for him to finally be able to tell her how he had been terribly abused as a kid. He proceeded to tell her about all the horrific things that had been done to him. It was absolutely terrifying and heartbreaking that anyone could go through this and according to my parents friend it was surprising he even could survive. The horrors the patient described made a lasting impression on his therapist and started messing with her badly for some reason. She was not used to treat trauma of this kind and it came to a point when she would be reluctant meeting her patient because she knew he would talk about things that frightened her. 
She didn't want to break his trust, though, and he really needed the therapy, so she said nothing. After a while however the patient noticed that he was unwillingly making her uncomfortable and mentioned it in a session. They both agreed that she couldn't help him in these conditions and it would be better if she referred him to colleague. She told me she was quite relieved not having to deal with this patient anymore but at the same time felt inadequate and unprofessional for being frightened by his pain. I'm a nurse. I've never felt bad about a patient firing me. I have felt bad a couple times about ones that threaten to do so and then change their mind. I love being a nurse, but some people are buttholes. There sure are. There are some buttholes in every job where you interact with humans. TLDR. Highly destructive and violent patient turns out to be a child rapist. Thank god he's gone. I work at an assisted living facility the floor I work on is basically a high functioning inpatient jerepsych. Had a patient who would write very long lists detailing how to kill the staff. Things like, I need to find a knife, I will slit their throats etc. Whenever he wasn't writing lists he would pace back and forth between all of our alarm doors. Try to open them and shove them when the alarm went off. When you do that a very loud piercing alarm goes off and the radios stop putting out any message but elopement second floor west stairway, over and over. This was hundreds of times a day. He would attack anyone who came near him, especially staff. It was getting bad. Broke all the picture frame. Smashed our flat screen TV in the common area into the ground. Smashed the tables, windows, doors, anything he could touch just constant crap. His niece went to his house where he lived with his two brothers. Floor to ceiling child pornography. A lot of it they recorded themselves. Some dating back to the early 70s. So yeah I was happy to see him be arrested. I feel terrible saying it, but anyone with a personality disorder, especially cluster B, ETA, I should say that I am doing inpatient psychiatry right now, and you can't really do anything effective with people who suffer from personality disorders in less than 5 days. Outpatient is a completely different story. As someone with BPD I sincerely apologize. At least some of are conscious of the cringy hurtful dramatic crap we do. Some of us really are there seeking change. As for the rest of us, I've met them too and I agree. Unrealistic expectations. Expectation management is a real thing and I have had patients come to me demanding the guaranteed investigation procedure that will solve their problems that they were promised earlier in their referral pathway or from some internet forum. Usually education with relevant facts clear things up but it eats into the next patient's waiting time and that is one reason why clinics overrun. I remember being particularly relieved but felt sorry for a patient who kept coming back with alternative treatments for his very curable cancer despite attempts to educate and support him on the merits of modern medicine. Eventually he went elsewhere presumably to try and find someone who would give him the answers he wanted to hear. When I had my foot surgery, I couldn't help but notice how all the people at the orthopedic practice I went to acted as if I were some sort of celebrity every time I visited. Then I looked around at the patients in the waiting room one day. Of the people there, the only people who looked like they were under 60 years old were my mother and I. She and I figure that probably, most of their regular patients don't really get better. Unlike them, I was a success story. So the reason the doctor's assistants always smiled and waved at me was because I had a real chance of not coming back to them for a long time. It was really sad and kind of sobering. So my mother is the difficult patient. She has a personality disorder and on top of that, is genuinely afraid of the doctor. It's not a good combo. It tends to bring out the worsts in her. I try to be at the doctors with her when I can, to help ease the tension for both the medical professionals and her, but I can't always be. I've really deeply appreciated the people who were exceptionally patient and kind to her. Not saying I might not react similarly when faced with difficult people, but it does make me sad reading some of these stories about medical professionals telling off patients. It's easy to be nice to nice people, but what really shows true character for me is when someone is nice to a truly difficult person. Mental illness sucks and isn't always so obvious as someone murmuring to themselves and like, munching on their arm. Although if they threaten you are sexist or racist towards you, etc you def have the right to defend yourself, no matter their mental stability. I did peer support and residential support specialist stuff so not a therapist or anything, 
but I had one client who was severely symptomatic, heard voices a lot and would argue loudly with them, would hurt themselves for attention, had awful boundary issues with other clients that borderline stalking, was reprimanded multiple times for bouts of sexual harassment towards other clients, didn't like to shower and believe that when bath water turned black it was toxins leaving your body and not just because they were that dirty. I truly hope this person found the help they needed and the right therapy though. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.